Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on exchange transfusion. An exchange transfusion is a medical procedure that is done by removing your blood and replacing it with blood or plasma from another donor. And that is done by using a catheter to transport the blood into the body. This is a picture showing an overview of how the exchange transfusion is done. Transfusion is indicated in infants that have hyperbilirubinemia and this helps to reduce the serum bilirubin level and reduce the risk of neurotoxicity which is associated with connectors in infants with neonatal jaundice. Hyperammonemia or to remove bacterial endotoxins in septicemia. Infants with severe electrolyte imbalance or hemolytic disease of newborn when the red blood cell destruction is very rapid. Preparation before the procedure, make sure that there is a sign written from the parent. Ensure resuscitation equipment is available. Stabilize and maintain the temperature, pulse and respiration. Obtain peripheral venous access for IV fluid maintenance. No gentle restraint of the child. And omit the last feed before the... And if less than 4 hours from the last feed, we gastric contents by nasogastric tube aspiration before the procedure. These are the types of blood used in exchange transfusion, which are rhesus isoimmunization using ABO compatible blood and rhesus negative blood. In emergencies, if we don't know the blood type of the baby, which is very rare, we can use the all negative blood. <coughs> So the blood used is irradiated fresh whole blood, preferably less than 5 days old, or reconstituted packed red blood cell plasma in a ratio of 3 to 1. The equipment needed for this procedure includes a dressing set, UVC or UAC set, a sterile dressing towel, equipment for vital signs monitoring, equipment for resuscitation should be readily available. Temperature control device must be used for warming the blood before and during blood transfusion. Antiseptic solution and gown sterile gloves and masks are needed as well. So for the procedure to be exchanged, the volume to be exchanged is two times the infant's total blood volume. Perform this procedure in the ICU, place the infant in supine position and make sure the restraints are not too tight. Evacuate the stomach using a tube and leave it in place to maintain gastric decompression and prevent regurgitation and aspiration of the gastric juice. Connect the baby to cardiac monitor, take baseline observations including the vital signs and record on the neonatal exchange blood transfusion sheet. Blood gas determination is also needed. So record every 15 minutes for the heart rate, the respiratory rate oxygen saturation as well. Take note to perform this procedure using aseptic technique. We have to put the mask on, scrub and put on sterile mask and gloves. Sterile gown and gloves. Perform umbilical vein catheterization. So cannulate the umbilical vein to a depth of not more than 5 to 7 cm in a term infant. For the catheter tip to be proximal to the portal sinus, attach the back of blood to the tubing and stop cocks attached to the UVC. We'll establish the volume of each aliquot and the volume for removal and replacement amount of blood given or withdrawn and also record the medications given. There are a few points to take note. First, pre-warm the blood to the body temperature using a water bath. Shake the blood bag gently every 5 to 10 cycles to prevent setting of the red blood cells. The rate of exchange blood is 3 to 4 minutes per cycle, which is, consists of 1 minute out, 1 minute in, and 1 to, min 1 to 2 minutes pause, excluding the time to discard the blood and draw from blood bag. Next, the syringe should be held vertically during infusion in to prevent air embolism. Total duration of the ET should be 90 to 120 minutes, consisting around 30 to 35 cycles. 
Always begin ET with an initial removal of the blood so that to avoid cardiac overload. Routine administration of calcium gluconate is not recommended. And repeat ET may be required in 6 hours for infants which have shown to have high rebound serum bilirubin. If the child is anemic, give an extra adequate volume of blood, 10 ml per kg, after the exchange transfusion. If the infant is on any IV medications, re-administer the medication after the procedure and it is recommended for feedings to be delayed for at least 4 to 24 hours to observe the infant for any possibility of post-exchange illness. These are the investigations that we should do pre-exchange and post-exchange. So pre-exchange includes serum bilirubin, full blood count, blood culture and sensitivity, via peripheral venous blood or UVC to reduce contamination. HIV, hepatitis B as baseline and other investigations as indicated. Whereas post-exchange investigations include serum bilirubin, full blood count, capillary blood sugar, serum electrolytes and calcium and others as indicated. So remember to discard the initial blood remaining in the UVC before sampling the blood for post-exchange tests. Post AT management, resume intensive phototherapy, monitor vital signs, monitor capillary blood sugar, and monitor the serum bilirubin levels. A rebound bilirubin level is to be expected around 2 to 6 hours after the transfusion. So we have to monitor the bilirubin levels at 2 hours, 4 hours, 6 hours, then after that, every 6 hours. The complications of exchange transfusion include infection. Vascular complication like blood clot or air embolism, arterial spasm of lower limbs, portal and splenic vein thrombosis or infarction of major organs, coagulopathies, hemodynamic instability like cardiac overload, hypovolemic shock or arrhythmia, electrolyte abnormalities like hypo or hyperkalemia, hypocalcemia or hypoglycemia, and necrotizing enterocolitis has shown to have an increase risk of this because uh, after exchange transfusion procedure and due to this reason the UVC is advisable to be removed after the procedure unless we are preparing for a second exchange transfusion. That's all for this video, thank you.